Jared Edelstein here, your celeb expert and your celeb savant. Celeb Savant is a weekly entertainment show. We have long-form career retrospective type interviews with celebrities, singers, actors, and industry experts. Hailing from Durban, South Africa, Majosi burst into the music scene in 2013 with his captivating debut EP, Marvelous Light. Capturing the tension of audiences across the country, the following year, he signed a deal with Universal Music South Africa, solidifying his artistic journey. With the release of his first full-length album, Fire, he skyrocketed to the iTunes Top 3, garnering significant recognition within the music industry. This achievement led to a prestigious nomination for Best Adult Contemporary Album at the esteemed South African Music Awards in 2017. In October 2018, Majosi released his self-titled album, which swiftly garnered widespread acclaim and acknowledgement. The album boasted two chart-topping singles, Waiting, which he performed as a guest judge on the second season of The Voice, and Somebody, Notably, the album featured a remarkable collaboration with the illustrious three times Grammy winning ensemble, the Soweto Gospel Choir. In 2022, Majosi collaborated with local artists such as Easy Freak, Janie Bay, and Canadian pop duo Neon Dreams. This ongoing exploration of musical partnerships highlights Majosi's commitment to pushing creative boundaries and connecting with diverse artists from around the globe. From playing at major South African festivals such as Rocking the Daisies, Opie Kopi and K-Day, to touring to Amsterdam and playing alongside local musical greats Francois van Koch and De Hilvers Fantastis, to opening up for international acts like the Lumineers, Neon Dreams and Callum Scott, Majosi continues to build a loyal fan base globally who love his authentic and self-reflective music. With the recent release of his latest album, A Great Exchange, Majosi continues to light fire in the music industry. Up next on Celebs Fund, we've got Majosi. Where do we find you in the world? What's happening in you in your life and how are you doing? Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, at the moment, I'm at home in Cape Town uh, okay. preparing for a bunch of things. I've got a, a launch coming. I've got a new album coming. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, just preparing for all of that. Let's rewind to the very beginning. So at what age did you decide, cool, I want to be in the entertainment world, whether it was as a child or as a teenager, and how did that journey progress to where we are today? So the Majorsi entertainment industry journey and story. Well, I guess I grew up loving to sing. I think mm. like my, most of us, you know, I loved loved music. I loved listening to music. Um, but growing up where I grew up, I grew up in Durban, yeah, and um, I, I grew, you know, but a late late eighties and and early nineties. The concept of doing anything artistic as a job was very foreign where I grew up. So the idea of being like a singer or a musician and and making a living out of that and that being like your life was kind of not even really heard of or not spoken about like you know people had more traditional jobs you know which yeah. was all good so i never i never actually thought that would become a reality for me like i never i i dreamt that would be like what i did but i never i never had the idea that i could do that until you know i got older and um there were a couple of uh, of my friends who started bands and they were doing well, like, uh, I don't know if you remember gangs of ballet. Yes. Uh, they were a great inspiration to, to actually f realizing that I could do music, you know? And, um, at the time I had people around me who, who saw the potential in me to do music and they supported me and they encouraged me to do it. So, uh, at the time I was working in church, you know, doing music at church. And then I kind of shifted into doing uh, music out in the industry and, um, you know, just recording songs and playing shows. And it just gradually became something, you know, I think it was a lot of groundwork, a lot of just playing shows wherever people could have me, weddings, markets, that kind of stuff. And um, again, I had like a good support and I had good friends in, in Gangs of Ballet and even Art Matthews, uh, came along and helped me as well. And like just seeing those examples, I think was the first thing that was like, okay, cool. I can actually do this. You know, I know these guys, they not far removed from me. Like they're just normal. Like I am, you know, and that's kind of how my journey started. You know, a lot of 
support and encouragement and uh, just being inspired by this. When the success started happening and people started hearing you on radio and you got nominated for South African Music Awards, et cetera, et cetera, was that like, oh, wow, it is happening? Was it a surprise? Was it a shock? Or it was like, okay, I've laid the groundwork down. I've built all this hard work. It's now just the next steps. Yeah, that's a good question, man. I mean, like for me, again, uh, I wasn't planning most of my life to even be in this industry and I didn't, so I didn't really know what things meant. I didn't know the consequences of, of being nominated and having your song on radio. Like yeah. when I started that stuff just happened. So mm-hmm. I like, I mean, again, I, I did work hard, but I thought, you know, you work hard and then this happens and this happens and this happens. So things were just happening. And um, at the time, I didn't understand what they meant. So I just took it as it came, as it came and uh, I was grateful for it. And every new opportunity opened the door to a new, uh, another thing, you know. D- d- I guess when it really started clicking was when Darling started getting played on radio a lot. That's when things started happening because radio stations would call all all over the country and they'd be like, Hey, your song is number one this weekend. And I would be like, I don't even know where this radio station is. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know know where in the country this radio station is. And then, you know, then the, the, the gigs started getting bigger and bigger. And um, then it started becoming like this thing. But again, like I wasn't preparing for that. I was just, going through the motions you know and uh just trying to now i look back and i'm like i'm so grateful but at the time i didn't know what was happening to be <laughs> honest so you weren't pl- necessarily planning to be in the entertainment or music industry so what mm. job did you think you were going to do um that's a very good question man i think at the time i wasn't sure what i wanted to do before mm. that you know um like i said i was working at church so i thought i'd be at church for a long time but I I knew because I I love playing guitar, like playing guitar by myself and just sitting like I love. I I knew I'd always do that, you know, even even if it was just, you know, every now and then going to like an open mic or something like that, you know. Um, But in terms of like my vocation or what I was what I wanted to do, I'm not sure. You know, I think as long as I was making people's lives better I, yeah. I would have been happy in whatever i do but i'm I'm grateful i've landed up in this position <laughs> for the listeners i recently mess, met majosi at the big day out music festival so that was mm-hmm. loads of fun majosi there was a whole bunch of different artists performing at the day so the difference for you when you performing your own sort of headlining show compared to performing at a festival with a bunch of friends or a bunch of artists Obviously, you bring the same amount of energy into play. Hmm. You bring the same uh, enthusiasm into it. But what is the difference for you? For me, um, throwing your own show is a, can be stressful. <laughs> it's a, it's it's not specific, pitching up to something that someone has already put hard work in and put a lot of effort into uh, promo and marketing. Yeah. And actually getting to be with uh, your friends and peers and on, on the same lineup as, you know, I've known – uh easy freak played at that show as well yes. and i've known easy freak we we uh we're both from durban so we knew each other before we did music we studied together as well we were like we've been friends for sure i don't even know how long maybe almost two decades you know oh wow uh, yeah man and then you know just to be able to play with someone like ross who is like a hero to me and now he's a, a friend you know and mm. And um, all, all everyone else, you know, whenever I get on a lineup with all these amazing South African artists, man, it really makes me happy. It makes me happy to see them. And it makes me so happy to hear the great quality music that they produce, you know, and it's, um, yeah, it's probably some that my happiest moments are those moments. And what do you enjoy about performing live? Uh, performing live is magic, man. I like, there's something, even in just music itself in in the songs, um, but that connection you get with people, 
through your songs and, and mm. the live performance and, and seeing their faces and seeing their reactions in real time is something that doesn't happen often in life. You know, it's not something you get to see. You see the reactions of people who have made the songs, the soundtracks to their lives, you know, yeah. whether it like their wedding song or the first time they met their girlfriend or wife or husband or whatever it is, or, you know, the first time like one of their family members passed away or something. There's always some type of memory memory attached to a song that's special to people and and seeing them react to those songs in real life and having that kind of magic connection is uh, something that's really indescribable and something that like 99.9 percent .9 people don't get to experience but i've fortunate enough to be to experience that and see that and see how amazing it can be you know so like definitely performing live out of the whole thing that is uh doing music and in the industry is like by far my favorite okay so i've got a point of discussion around this so i love being right up in front enjoying jamming dancing i take a couple of video clips obviously for socials for now for slaves of mine a couple of photos and i put my phone away yeah but i notice a lot of people around me are trying to get that perfect video perfect uh photo tweeting posting uh threading <laughs> whatever they're doing <laughs> so yeah. if i'm the person on the receiving end on this stage don't you find that that takes away from some of the connection that you're speaking of or not seeing the people's faces or is it just where society is at the moment that's a good question man like i think it's such a hard one for me. I think it will, I think it's a personal thing because uh, I come from a, a generation maybe where we didn't grow up with cell phones and, yeah. and that type of thing, you mm -hmm. know, and my, my connection with my, my phone and, uh, and technology is very separate. Like I don't live, yeah. if I can, if I could, I wouldn't have a cell phone, yeah. you know, like if I could avoid it, I, I would just have an email address. But, you know, this uh, the newer generations after me have grown up with cell phones and they've grown up learning how to live their lives with it and share their lives on it and be genuine, you know, and their, rea their, their life is genuinely shared through these devices. And um, even though I might not understand it as a, as a person who's a little bit older, like, uh, I can't say that they won't have that same connection through mm -hmm. their phones because it's almost like th they're born with mobile yeah. devices yeah. being an extension of them yeah, yeah. where for me, it is just, uh, just, you know, it's just an add on. It's really hard to say. I honestly don't know what the correct answer is. Yeah. <laughs> So do you feel that most of them are genuine when they're on the social media? I actually find that most of them are filtered. <laughs> so this is an interesting debate or discussion because they're putting, yeah. if you look at it, they're adding filters to their photos. So the fact that they're already mm -hmm. adding a filter means that it's yeah. not genuine to who they are. So I suppose each person has a different approach, different feeling or different authenticity when it comes around to social media. It's just about that person discovering what that is for them. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And like I said, it's uh, that's the nature of life, man. We all we all grow up differently. We have different experiences, and we have different expressions, you know. Mm. And it's hard to look at someone's expression and say for sure if they're being genuine or not based off your own expression, you know. So it's like I like to, you know, allow people the freedom to do or be whoever they want to be, mm. but also challenge people to also be like, hey, is this really you? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Only you can tell us only you know at the end of the day. Yeah. We can we can look at you and make and make uh, some type of judgment or whatever. But like at the end of the day, it's your life. And only you know what you're doing. I love me a CD. I still budget for my CDs every month. I know that I'm not sure if you're aware that physicals are making a huge comeback. For example, mm. last year alone in the UK, there were 5.5 million vinyls sold, the biggest sales since 1990. Uh, also yes. last year, CDs had the first increase in sales in 20 years. Cassettes are making wow. a comeback. So I, for me, it's a thank you to the artists for all the hard work they're doing. I love the pictures. I love the journey of going to choose which I'm going to buy. Obviously, in South Africa, we don't have CD stores anymore, but obviously in the, on the line, online experience, we've also got these digital platforms where people download or listen to music at the moment. What is your perception of each? And do you have a preference of either? Um, you're a very good question, man. 
Let me, I'll approach it first from the viewpoint of um, a listener. Spotify and Apple Music and the other DSPs are wonderful as a listener. You have access to all the music in the mm. world and the algorithms are great, especially on Spotify, where you can discover so much new music without even having to look for it and you discover new bands. And I'm a, I'm an avid music listener, so I'm always trying to discover new bands and just enjoy them and enjoy the yeah. music. And um, that's where streaming has been like beautiful. And it's given access to people from of uh, musicians from all over the world, giving access to the whole globe um, at a very cheap rate. That being said, it's also cheapened the value of music in some ways, you know, where CDs were, you know, they had a, a decent monetary value to them. And also, again, it's a physical thing. It's something you see, something that's present with you, something that you have to take out and put into your car. You have to put some thought in like, yeah. you know what, I'm going to put this CD in and this is the CD I'm going to listen to. I can't skip through, just listen <laughs> yeah. to one song from the CD and then leave it, you know, again, but times change, you know, and, and things happen and you have to be adaptable to those things and you have to figure out, okay, cool. You know, I might not like the way this is going, but how can I use this to my benefit? And um, that's where um, Spotify and the other uh, streaming platforms are great. They try and help you and educate you. There's a lot of uh, back-end platforms that show you like, hey, like this is how you can get more streams. This is how you can pitch. This is what we suggest to you. This is, you know, they try and give you the tools to maximize something that's happening, whether you like it or not, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, I'm, I'm happy to hear about that CD and, and vinyl stuff. Like, I know it's also, it's also nice for people to have something physical that's almost like, in a way, like a memento of that band, you know? And yeah. if you're a big fan of a band or an artist, it's nice to have something that is represented in the physical world as opposed to just on your phone. So uh, yeah, there's, there's space for both, but again, things change all the time. Yeah. So now when you listen to music by other artists, being a music creator yourself, and this is an interesting conversation because I recently asked this uh, to the guys, Dom and Dave from Goldfish, and they said, because they're music creators, when they are listening to music, they, very rarely are able to relax and enjoy it. They're busy unpacking mm. the nuances, why they put that lick in, why they put in that guitar riff or whatever, whatever. So when you listen to music, is it an opportunity for you to relax and enjoy it? Or do you unpack all the time? It's a bit of both for me. Um, I'm always unpacking again, um, especially when I am in the process of, of writing music and mm, writing yeah. music for an album or yeah. something like that. You know what? I unpack, if I really, really like a song, I'm always unpacking it because I'm yeah. like, why do I like that song? And why haven't I written something like this? <laughs> before? Yes. You know, like it's a, a lot of times there's songs where are like, Oh wow, that sounds like a song I would have written. What did they do to actually get to there? You know, cause I'm yeah. always trying to get better and better and better. So I think that is the, the curse of most creatives in this field is you always will be unpacking songs, especially songs you like, especially songs that are within my genre. Now I love just listening to songs and relaxing. And to be honest, those songs that I just relax to will be songs that I know I would never make that it would okay. never be in my wheelhouse. So I just sit back and I enjoy it. And I like, maybe I'll unpack it a little bit and I'll be, you know, be a bit interested and be like, okay, cool. This is how these guys do this. That's interesting that they went with this. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a little bit of both for me. But, okay. So now you mentioned about creating music. So from zero to three to four minutes, what is that mm -hmm. journey for you? What inspires it? What invigorates it? What motivates it? Is it the same every time? Is it easy? Does it take you long? Let's unpack your creative mind in creative music. Sure. It's always evolved and changed over the years, you know, like as I've um, tried to become a better songwriter and a better, a better artist, I've, I've always tried to change it up a little bit. You know, when I first started, I, I primarily just sat with my guitar and um, I just kind of sang whatever came 
came mm. out, you know, and then I evolved a little bit into just sitting with um, my piano because I was like, I'm not as good on piano as I am on guitar. So it challenges me and I'm a little bit restricted with my chords and things. So I have to be a bit more creative with the, the melodies and things like that, you know. And then other times, like more recently now, I sit with other people and we exchange ideas because, you know, okay. that's a, a beautiful thing where eventually you realize like, you know what, it's not just about me. Uh, we want to try and create or discover the best song we can. And, and often it's nice to have people to bounce the ideas off and, you know, because sometimes I'll think of this thing and then someone will be like, oh, what if you do it like that? And I'll be yeah. like, oh, wow, that makes that's makes so much more sense. And it's so much more beautiful, you know, and you're just servicing the song, you know, you're not servicing your own ego that way, you know, and it's it's a great thing, you know, and you leave at the end feeling like, wow, I created this thing with another human being. Yes. You know, so it always change. And sometimes, sometimes we'll, whether it's me or uh, other people with other people, uh, I'll come in with an idea that I feel passionate about. Uh, but lately I just like to just sit down and then we just start talking and then just see what happens, you know, because I think, uh, I really believe that music is the music is out there already. We're just pulling it from a source, you know, <laughs> we're not trying to make, just create something yeah. out of nothing, yeah. nothing, but it's there you know and the most beautiful songs are, are songs that are that have always been there but now this is the first time they get the platform so yeah it's interesting the reason i'm giggling is because i've i must have spoken to now like 180 artists say uh 160 or 155 of them being music musicians and so many mm -hmm. of them have mentioned that same thing about it's out there and you just a vessel or pulling it down into you to yeah. sing. <laughs> so that's why I was giggling because it was just like, okay, I've heard this. This is so many people who feel the same. But now, so yeah. did you initially, when you first started, did you start uh, writing or creating by yourself and then only later started collaborating with other artists? Yes. Yeah. This, but it was uh, by myself in the beginning, you know, yes. because that's the beauty of learning an instrument and being able to sing a little bit or not at all, whatever you want. Like mm. if you learn your own instrument, you can, you can create music, you know, and you can, you can hear how it would sound, you know, and you can also at the same time entertain people with just your voice and your guitar. You essentially have a, a fully fledged song that most people can enjoy, you know? Um, so it was always, yeah, in the beginning, it was always just myself just trying to figure out how to do it. Like learn, even eventually I learned how to use some recording programs and figuring that out. Like, um, and then, uh, then, I you know, discovered some people who learned, who knew how to produce properly. And then you're like, oh, wow, you much better at this than me. Uh, please, you know, please help me. You know, a, a lot of music is, even if you are a singer songwriter, you are constantly working with people, you know? Yeah. And, and, I mean, there's some guys who can um, write, sing, produce, mix and master all on their own. But even still then someone has to come in and help them promote it sometimes. Or, or there's, there's never just one person involved in these things, you know, um, not to say that it's not possible, but for the most part, like in any any artist across the world, there's a team involved of people who are skilled in their different things and which allows the artist to focus on what they're really good at. So now let's unpack um, the new music, the new album. W what was anything specific around the writing of this new music? Any uh, songs that are your favorites? Uh, obviously they're all your favorites, but anyone that has a little shining <laughs> towards let's, <laughs> let's unpack the new album. This is my first album. Firstly, as a independent artist, okay. um, I was with the label for the, all the years before that. Um, and they, I mean, they treated me really well and like without them, I wouldn't be in the position where I am. Yeah. Um, but it was exciting to, you know, get to do this project um, independently and see what that looks like, you know? So um, not that I never had too much freedom before, uh, but I had total freedom, you know, and yeah. all the decisions were uh, my own and, and my teams. And 
um it was just yeah it was just nice getting to work with no kind of restrictions i had to impose restrictions on myself in terms of time and figuring out when we were we were, we were going to release this and who i was going to work with um but it's been i mean it's been a very beautiful up and down journey because you know as a as a creative like there's always times where you feel like an imposter and you're like wow am i am i really doing this at you know do i deserve to do this will people like this song um but the, the i try and remember the times when i was making the music you know the making music is is so much fun and often you know if we get to the end of a song and we finish the song and i enjoy it i try and remember and be like you know what before i was worrying about whether anyone else would enjoy this music i liked the music for myself you know yes and i think that is the the biggest success you can have as an artist is just being able to enjoy and appreciate your own music and then everything else that comes afterwards is really out of your control you know so i've been you know learning that process um i've had such a great time working with uh, a bunch of different artists and s- songwriters on the song like i try to work with as many songwriters as possible i had sessions all for like about two years pretty much you know with guys like um uh, will lindley who's just uh, totally cracking at the moment um other guys from canada and uh, america and friends in south africa and i try to work with different producers here Mm -hmm. and there and just kind of just make music you know just make music with my friends and see what would happen you know yeah it's been it's been a, a really really beautiful journey i can't i don't even know what my favorite song is to be honest you know like uh i th- i think eventually you know once the music is out and i'm kind of out of the process of trying to promote all these different type of different things and you know just getting to listen to it for myself um as a listener and and not worry about anything else then i think i can make a, an informed decision <laughs> but also the thing is that it's all they're all your babies they're all your children so it's always very difficult yeah. to uh, point or you know highlight one out so totally so looking forward to hearing all the new music and everything that's coming out so i love this game this leads me to my f- favorite game that i always always ask the singers um i know that if i had to ask you this question in two minutes two seconds two hours two months I know your answer will be different every time because there's millions of them. Okay. If you had to push play to five songs by other artists, once we finish this conversation, what would those five songs be and by whom? Okay. Okay. I'll start with uh, number one would be All the Noise by an artist called Manana. It's um, yeah, just some of the most beautiful lyrics I've I've heard in a mm. long, long, long time. And he's a South African artist, and he he'd been teasing the song for a long time, and finally he released it. I think a week or two ago. Okay. And it's just beautiful, and I'm like, this is how I aspire to write. Just beautiful lyrics like this that really hit the heart. Um. So that is one. Um. Press play, and my second option would be probably um. It's a little well way out of that genre, but. Mm. Uh, a song called Bulls Bulls on Parade by um uh Rage Against the Machine. That's it. Oh uh, okay, okay. It's a it's a very a heavy song, but it's great to run to and it just gets me amped and excited for the day. Mm-hmm. And number three would probably be a song by Jack Garrett called Time. It's because it's a beautiful song uh that speaks about don't think it's too late. It's not too late, basically. That's yeah. what that song is talking about. And I love, love Jack Garrett. He's probably my favorite artist. Um, and he's probably, over the last five years, he's inspired me the most, than uh, more than anyone. Um, then next would be, um, I love Easy Freak. Um, Easy Freak, um, there's a song called All I Want, uh, yep. which is just a beautiful throwback to 90s R&B. And I think Easy Freak are very, very underrated and they're an awesome band. Um, and then next would be definitely uh, Ma- one of Matthew Mole's new songs. I think it's called Enough, uh, okay. which talks about you know uh, you know you'll you'll always be enough, and it's just a beautiful message, beautifully written, beautifully produced. Uh, I love that song. 
I like the mix, different genres, all hopping around the world. So that's super cool. So Majosi, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. So as a final message to the listening audience, what would you like to say? First of all, thank you for having me. Um, hey, everyone. Hopefully, please go check out my album, A Great Exchange, um, on all the streaming platforms. Um, check me out at Majosi Music on Instagram and Facebook. See where I'm playing. See what I'm up to. Uh, would love to connect with you. And um, yeah. Yeah.